All right, welcome to this tutorial. We are going to talk about data sheets today. So this is kind of a cool project. We're doing this in conjunction with Octopart. So we wanted to talk about something that is very important to electrical engineers and engineers in general. But data sheets is something that you don't really learn about in college. They expect you to just figure it out as you go along. And that's fine. I mean, that's how most people do it. But I'm hoping that today we are going to make that learning curve a bit more shallow. We're going to do this with Octopart because they have all of these parts available at their disposal and they have a fantastic way to find data sheets. And we'll show some of the pros and cons of different ways of finding data sheets today, as well as the incredibly important information in them. And we'll be using Octopart as an example, not just because they're helping us with this, but because they are an excellent resource. And we'll get into more detail on that later. So the first question is, what are data sheets? How do you find them? Why are they important? And roughly, what do they contain? So that was a lot of questions. Let's start with the first one. So what are data sheets? Data sheets are the official documentation from a manufacturer of all the information that they think is important for you to know about their product. And while it's usually not perfect, it is the reference for a particular part. Now, it's kind of interesting because data sheets in that way, because of what they consider important and what they include or don't include in the format in which they share it, that can actually make a serious effect on my decision on what part to use. If I am looking at two parts that look basically the same, but one has really good information, application notes that show how to use it, recommendations, all that sort of stuff, making it easier for me as an electrical engineer to use it, I'll, I'll use that, all other things being equal, because it makes my life easier. And you have other data sheets that are very, very high level or poorly organized, or you can't actually search through the text and things like that. And I don't want to use them because they're a real pain. Because frankly, the data sheet is all of that information that you need to use the part, which is why it's so incredibly important and why we're going over this today. So the question of why we need the data sheets is because how else are we going to use most of the parts? You get a resistor, it's not a big deal. You put in the resistor, it's got two nodes or two terminals, and, and there's no directionality. It's not a big deal. At the same time, you still need to know, like, what's the power rating for that? What is it made up of? What are the materials in it? Is there anything that you need to know about? But you could uh, well, kind of figure it out. Just put it in trial and error. It's not that big of a deal. But as you get any more complicated than a resistor or some other two terminal, very simple device, it's really important to get the data sheets because then you know what's going on with it. You know what the pins are. You know what the electrical ratings are, you know what the power ratings are, you know all of that sort of things. And so that's generally what's contained within a data sheet. Sometimes manufacturers create a document that provides the part size, a brief description, and some like bullet points that are really concise information about it, and that's about it. And technically you could consider that a data sheet, but that's not what I think of when I think of a data sheet. I would call something like that a spec sheet or a specification sheet or a drawing. I have a have an example here with triad magnetics. The first thing that pops up is this inductor and triad magnetics, which are simpler devices. They aren't that crazy. So you usually only have about one page. And as you can see here, you only have a, a brief description, outline dimensions, some of the ratings, it's Rojas compliance, and that's about it. So while some people may call this a data sheet and even under Octopart, this is under the data sheet heading. I personally would call this a spec sheet, but eh, either way, it works just fine. Sometimes you'll literally have just a drawing and it looks like a manufacturing drawing. And then it has in the corner, maybe one or two lines, and that would be a drawing. And personally, I don't really like those because they don't give me a whole lot of information. And for what I'm doing, that's usually not what I need. I usually need more of the electrical specifications and stuff like that. So when I think of a data sheet, I'm thinking of something that's usually at least four to five pages, sometimes 10 to 100. And I have seen data sheets of over 1500 pages long for certain microcontroller families. So they're very complicated devices with lots and lots of peripherals and lots of other crazy things. So we're going to use some examples from our friends of CircuitBread. Uh, we have one from CU Devices, PUI Audio, and EBM Pabst, and they're about 10 to 15 pages each. So as you look through them, you can kind of get a feel for the differences in style, but you are still getting basically the same information. 
So as you can see with the CUI devices and data sheet, you have four pages. It gives you a picture of what it looks like. It shows you the features, the very brief features, and then it has a table of information, some of the basic information about whether it's UL related, and that it don't, though it doesn't say UL, that's what that symbol means, and Rojas compliance part number key so you can find exactly what part number you want and it gives you a little bit more selection there and then it goes into the specifications solderability mechanical drawing and and that's it so that's fairly simple but then as we jump to the the EBM PAPS Diaforce datasheet which is a little bit more complicated it's a little bit more involved of a part uh, you're going to get more information this one actually has a table of contents it's long enough and you have that first page that is even a splash page. So you can look at this and you can see, okay, there is definitely a, a different way of presenting the information, but a lot of the similarities are still there. So you can see some of the basic ways that this is connected, the wire sizes of the parts, things along those lines. But I, I don't want to get too much into detail here. I just want to show the differences in style. So I'll only pull up one more. Let's actually look at this data sheet from PUI Audio. You can see this is this is a, a spec sheet drawing style where you have a very, very simple display. You just get the dimensions and the revision history and the specifications, and that's about it. It doesn't give you a whole lot of information on how to use it, how to interface with it, and stuff like that. And that usually means that that information is somewhere else on their page. So again, I don't really want to get into this too much because I'm going to do a later video where we get into the meat of the data sheet. What I think is important right now is to talk about where to get that. So it's kind of funny. I've been using Octopart as an example, but there's a lot of different ways you can find it. And frankly, Google, it's all encompassing. You, you can just Google a part number with the word data sheet after it and something will come up if there's a data sheet available. And that has its pros and cons and we'll go into that. But I want to give you a couple of different other options first. Besides that, you can go directly to a manufacturer's website. You can go and, for example, since I'm still on PUI Audio on my computer, I can go to PUIAudio.com and look it up and find this part and find the data sheet. You can also go to your favorite distributor's website. So we have our friends of Circuit Bread, Rochester, Online Components, and Sager. Those are all distributors. And if your part is something that they distribute, they almost always will have that data sheet available. And then finally, as mentioned before, you can go to Octopart and look for the part that way. So I just gave you Google, manufacturer's website, distributor's website, and Octopart. And frankly, we're biased. Again, we're working with Octopart, and so you can take this with a grain of salt. But we think it's great because it is kind of the best of all of those worlds. With Google, it's really hit or miss. You don't know what sort of website you're going to end up on. You don't know what's going to pop up. Is it going to pop up the manufacturer's website? Is it going to pop up an old version? Is it going to not include the errata that you need? Is it going to have other issues. So Google, even though it's very, very wide in its net, it's just really inconsistent with its quality. You can go directly to the manufacturer's websites, which would be my number two option, but the manufacturer websites are somewhat inconsistent and it makes it hard to find at times. It's difficult. Like, where do you have it hidden? What's going on here? Sometimes they don't have a parametric search for their parts. And so you have to actively find the exact part you're looking. And no matter what just what manufacturer you're using, you have to learn their particular website. Distributor websites are great, but the challenge there is that they are limited to the parts that they represent. So if you have an IP and E style distributor, they're not going to have microcontroller and semiconductor style parts available. Octopart, on the other hand, has nearly every part available because it can, takes all of the data from all of the distributors and congregates it together. And so it is providing a consistent, easy to find fashion of all of the data sheets. And you can actually be confident in the fact that they are from the appropriate source because it's a trustworthy source. So my number one suggestion would be to use Octopart because it is the best way to find nearly any data sheet that is available. And it does so in a consistent manner. Now, the one benefit of using the manufacturer website directly is that if there is an update, that is the most trustworthy place to go. So if you're having a problem, like, man, I have this microcontroller. It's not acting the way I would expect it to act. You can go to the manufacturer and look to see if they have some sort of errata 
and that's E-R-R-A-T-A. If you haven't heard that word before, it can sound kind of weird. And maybe I'm even saying it wrong. I say a lot of words wrong, as I've been told in the YouTube comments. But it's, that is a great place to go if you need the most up-to-date information on, oh, we messed up on our last data sheet. This is actually what is supposed to happen. Other than that, I would say the easiest way is to go through Octopart. And so as we pull something up, let me just show you exactly how easy this can be done. So I'm on octopart.com and we have our pic 10 f 200 series. So all I have to do is type in pic 10 f 200 hit search, and it pops up. And right there at the top, I can hit data sheet and the data sheet pops up. It was literally that easy. Now let's say I want to do something a little bit more vague. Let's say I need a mm, power relay and I go like that. Now I have a lot of different options out there. I can look through them and I can still, oh, hey, is this Omeron one any, any good? Let me just click on the data sheet. And I immediately have that right there as I'm doing my search. Now, obviously, if you're searching for power relays, you're going to want some more of a parametric search or anything like that. But I just love how simple it is. It just pops up with this in-browser viewer for a quick review to say, ah, this is actually useful. This is something that I'm interested in. And then you're done. You're good to go. Frankly, personally, when I am dealing with data sheets, I'll use this to look through the data sheet, make sure that it's actually going to be beneficial for me. And then I typically download it and open it with my system PDF viewer, which just allows me to search within the PDF. It's so much easier to do a text search for something that I'm looking for rather than scrolling through, particularly when the data sheet is several hundred pages long. So the one challenge with doing that and the one reason why you do need to be careful when you do that and something I need to think about as well when I'm working with it is to make sure you have the most up-to-date version. So sometimes I'll download the data sheet to do all of the searching that I need to, but if I'm doing a long-term project or I'm using a part, again, we did the pic 10 f 200 series and that took a long time to do. So I just downloaded the data sheet and that's an older part. So I'm not expecting any really big changes, but after a while, I should go back and check and make sure that there's not a new version. And so somewhere on the data sheets, there's usually something that says last updated or last reviewed or something along those lines. And it's just good to double check that every once in a while to make sure that you have the most up to date information or the most up to date data sheet. And this is again, where it's probably best to go to, go to the manufacturer every once in a while even though that really does depend. So data sheets can be very long and can be very intimidating. As you're looking at it, you're just overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information. And sometimes you have to think, how do I even approach this? And again, most of the examples that we've provided have been pretty straightforward. But in another video that we're going to do where we're going into the meat of exactly what's kept inside of a data sheet, I'm gonna be using a data sheet that is several hundred pages long. And instead of getting overwhelmed by that, especially if you're kind of new to this and you don't have a whole lot of experience, perhaps you're in an embedded engineering course right now and you're looking at your first microcontroller data sheet and you're just overwhelmed, you got to approach it the same way you'd eat an elephant. That's just one bite at a time. So don't be overwhelmed. Take your time. Stick with us. I hope this video helped, but we're also going to do another video on exactly what that data sheet contains, how to find what you need, and also to find what you didn't need, know you needed to know, but you actually do. So I hope this was helpful again in understanding what a data sheet is and exactly why you need to understand it, not only as an electrical engineer, but if you're an engineer in general, data sheets are phenomenally important to be able to use the tools that are given to you and the components that are given to you. I just want to thank Octopart for doing this with us. This has been a great collaboration with them. And I'm so excited to do so because again, it's just a great resource to find parts, find stock of parts, and find the data sheets that you need to be able to do your projects successfully. I hope this has helped you and that you have a better idea of what data sheets are, why they're important, and where you can find them. If you want more educational content, please check out circuitbread.com. But if you want some parts so that you can get some hands-on experience, definitely check out octopart.com where you can get basically any part under the sun. We hope you've enjoyed this video and it was helpful. And if it was, give this video a like, subscribe to this channel, and we will catch you in the next one. Take care.
Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. Did you know that circuitbread.com has more than tutorials? One of the other many things that we have are several excellent open source textbooks that benefit from our search tools, highlighting, super fast page changes, and keyboard friendly navigation. Go check them out.